Lenovo official had yet another AMA. The North American senior gaming product manager Ben Myers was hosting it. They've also been streaming gameplay of the Legion Go a couple of times this week on Twitch with their senior community manager Ben Green. I'll link the channel streams in the description if you want to check those out. Unfortunately though, he has one of the pre-production models to test with, so we still really haven't seen what the final product looks like or how it behaves or performs. But on to the categories of the AMA. First we're going to talk about availability before we weren't quite sure if the one terabyte model was going to be available it turns out that it is going to be available in the u.s uh, it doesn't sound like anywhere else is going to have the one terabyte model at the release date of october 31st i had asked about what the pre-order release date is he was not able to give me any specifics but if you look at micro center's website they have it slated for october 1st which is this sunday on to the next category which is the controllers we have some more clarification they are Bluetooth. We knew that already, but they're stated as being wireless when detached with Bluetooth and wired when attached. So the pogo pins that they connect to will actually reconnect them as wired controllers. Also, you can use these on other devices that have Bluetooth capability, and they're going to provide instructions for that inside of the user guide for the Legion Go. Just one thing to note here is it's kind of a double-edged sword because when you take a game that you're playing, and you detach the controllers or turn them off and turn them back on there are certain games that won't respect that and detect the controller some games only look for the controller when you first launch them this is more common on older games maybe 2017 2018 and older a lot of them did not automatically keep looking for the controller so the concern for me here is that if you're gonna play a game and you disconnect the controller in the middle of it because you want to play the with them detached from the Legion Go, it may not recognize. Already close to end my stream time. Still learning how to connect to these guys, hang on. I've done it many times, I promise. There we go. Oh, I'm revived. All right, we're gonna try non-FPS mode real quick then. If I don't hit the power button accidentally. <laughs> Can I do it mid-game actually? I think we had problems with it before. Yeah, don't, don't do that mid-game. <laughs> Another thing is that plug and play, while it's a cool system, is not perfect. There are times where plug and play does not work until you reboot, does not detect that device reconnecting. You know, often I'll have to take a, something from a USB port and plug it into another USB port to get it to detect unless I reboot. So there may be some issues there. We'll have to wait and see. The upside is that when they are wired, the latency is going to obviously be better. Moving on, there was a question I had about the back button if they have an ability to do multiple functions like with hotkeys so for example you could press one of the M1 or M2 buttons with the A button and it would do a turbo mode or you press M1 or M2 with a B button and it would do something else maybe a keyboard escape command or alt F4 or something and unfortunately it's just a one button press does one function and that's it right now but they may add this in the future there was also talk about hotkeys turns out that the select and start or they refer to it as the legion left and legion right keys have a lot of built-in combinations for the hotkeys such as switching between desktop and gamepad mode switching power profiles using the on-screen keyboard and many others the next it had a question about whether or not steam input has been tested and how it behaves and it was brought out that it's recognized as an x input controller or xbox 360 which is cool but we might lose out on the functionality the four back buttons as well as the gyro I don't think that steam is going to be able to see that but we'll have to wait and see could you possibly use the gyro and the back buttons still in legion space while you're using steam input as an Xbox 360 controller and have a combination of the two controller layers possibly so we'll have to wait and see lastly about the controllers I asked if they're replaceable outside of the warranty or an RMA process and he said that they're working on replacement options but there wasn't any comment on how much the controllers would cost and that they don't have any third-party parts suppliers at this point like I fix it so everything that they're going to have for available parts is going to be direct through Lenovo at this time the next category we'll go over is accessories talking about the cable charger it measures to be about six feet long and it's rated for 65 watts which we kind of already knew but also brought out that the device rated for 
up to a 100 watt charger. A few questions about the Legion glasses, whether or not they're going to be available at release, which they should be, if they're bundled together or not with the Legion Go itself, and no, there's not going to be any bundles available, whether or not the glasses are transparent or you can't see through them, they are transparent, but they're darkened a little bit, similar to other glasses on the market. And Ben made mention that they are useful in games where there's small text or small interface elements. Something interesting, I've never used a pair of those yet, but that was about it for the glasses. Moving on to question about keyboard accessories or if there's an LTE and or 5G model of the Legion Go, which there is not. The keyboard is still being discussed and they're trying to figure out how to implement one. So that's just something that sounds like it's still in the research and maybe not even design phase, just discussion phase at this point. No big confirmations there. And as we discussed and learned from the last AMA, there is no e-pin support on this display. There was also a question about whether or not a CAD model would be released so that the community could provide 3D printing solutions and things of that nature. And it sounds like they want to, but it's ultimately going to be up to, you know, Lenovo's corporate legal team and all the other big wigs they have to go through. The next thing we'll talk about is the speakers. This is the second time, the previous AMA, and, and then now that they've kind of downplayed the speakers, saying they're not great, basically. This is based on Ben's experience with the pre-production model that he has. So there could be room for improvement there. He said there's some talks about Dolby integration with them. Sounds like the Steam Deck and the Ally might be the clear winners here, but we'll really just have to wait and see how it sounds in person. Then there was some discussion again about TDP that's kind of gone back and forth about the different power profiles and modes and things of that nature in the previous AMA. So it was nice to get a little more confirmation about what kind of power profiles we're looking at here. We've got a 5 to 7 watt quiet mode, 15 watt balanced mode, and 25 watt is what they call their performance mode. And then they have a custom or manual mode that goes from up to 5 watt to 25 watt on battery or up to 30 watt if it's plugged in. And then it was mentioned again if they're possibly looking into supporting up to 35 watt plugged in, but it's probably going to be capped at 30 watt. And the thing about the Z1 Extreme, at least with the Ally, is the most efficient power and performance is somewhere between 18 to 22 watts. That's kind of the sweet spot of the chip. After that, you really start seeing diminished returns where you're just essentially getting one to two more FPS for like five more watts of power and at the expense of much higher thermals. Moving on to some other hardware questions, whether or not the micro SD is bootable and Ben was not sure on this, but you can definitely boot with the USB. Then there was discussion again about Thunderbolt 3 support on the USB ports because there was a placard at IFA that mentioned it was Thunderbolt capable. But when asked about it, he kind of gave a really odd indirect answer. He mentioned all the specs of the USB-C ports and then follows with that there's no quote Thunderbolt, but most of the underlying technology is there. Then when asked what no Thunderbolt meant that it won't support Thunderbolt 3 docks, he said that he uses a Thunderbolt 3 dock on the go and it works. So to be honest, I'm not really sure why there is so much hesitancy or indirect response about this. Most of the community wants to know this because of possible eGPU support. And so far in both AMAs, the question has been kind of dodged or left unanswered. I think simply because it really hasn't been tested, but we'll have to wait for a proper review of the production unit that someone that has an eGPU to try it out. Another thing that was discussed was the Windows Hello biometrics. If there's a fingerprint reader or if there's facial recognition, there's no webcam on this, so there's no facial recognition. And although it sounds like he wanted to have a fingerprint reader that was excluded from the final production. So you just have to use a pen or password or use an application like auto log on if you're not worried about security with your device. When you power it on, then it will just automatically log you in. The next category we're going to talk about is the software. There was a question about if there's a cloud recovery option. This is something that the Ally has where it can reset your unit back to factory settings without a USB flash drive or recovery drive. So it's really useful in that aspect. The only limitation with the Ally though is that you only have access to this cloud recovery when your device is within your 12 month warranty.
warranty or at least it's 12 months in the US. So anyways, Ben brought out that they don't have this in place. Previously on the other AMA, it was brought out that you for your products, you can access and download a USB recovery image that you can use to restore your system in the event that you can't boot, which Asus does not offer for the ROG Ally. They only give you the cloud recovery option, which is kind of weird. Next on the software side, we're going to talk about Legion Space. On the previous AMA, uh, talk about putting in an FPS limiter and lower refresh rates. This is something that they're still discussing or trying to figure out if they can implement it. So no real news there. There's questions about whether or not the drivers are going to be available for download on day one. Yes, they are. You'll be able to log into support.lenovo.com and download them. Legion Space is going to be kind of an all-in-one or all-inclusive app where it's going to provide updates to your all the different drivers and firmware and things of that nature, BIOS updates, the AMD GPU drivers, which will be nice. Compared to the ROG Ally, that has two separate apps that you have to kind of battle with to get the drivers delivered to your machine, unless you just download them directly off of Asus website. And there was some questions about game profiles, if there's going to be an ability to have in-game profiles with adjustable TDP, resolution, refresh rate, FPS, all that stuff. And they don't have anything right now, which from what Ben's saying, they have something that's kind of already in the interface that's been integrated. It's just kind of there as a placeholder. So it's something that they want to do, something that probably they're planning to do. I would hope so. Personally, I think that this is a huge item. The Steam Deck and the Ally both have per game profiles at this point. If Lenovo is going to come in late to the game, it really needs to try to match or try to beat the competition. It seems like Legion Space has promise, but it seems pretty bare bones at this point. But as always, software comes last and they've already stated that there will be day one over the air updates when reviewers get the product in their hands. That was about all the items that were covered that had any sort of big significance. If I missed something, let me know. Based on Micro Center's ad, it looks like it's going to be available for order on the 1st of October and I would imagine Best Buy and Lenovo's website to have it available on that day as well. But we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully it will also be in reviewers hands soon but I'd suspect it's probably going to be closer to mid-October before we see any reviews of the final production unit. But that's going to wrap it up for this AMA review. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.